Well, for more on the Palestinian reaction, we can go to Lebanon now to speak to Rami Khoury. Thank you for your time. The lack of a Palestinian representative at the table, does that mean it's quite telling? What does it really say about Donald Trump's peace plan? Well, it's not a peace plan. It's an American-Israeli right-wing initiative to essentially give uh, the Israeli state all of the controls that it wants to have permanently over much of the Palestinian land and to subjugate the Palestinians into essentially second-class uh, people. This is a new mandate. This is a replay of 1922, uh, when the French and the British had, had mandates over these territories, the exact same territories, Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon. Uh, and this is a kind of a 21st century mandate uh, in which the white Western powers um, have the initiative and the local people just obey whatever the colonial powers tell them to do. It's not is a serious... Is that how it's being viewed in Palestine? Absolutely. Every, there isn't a single Palestinian uh, and very, very few individual uh, extremist Arabs who have accepted it. Nobody has accepted it. It's, and, and, and most of the knowledgeable people in, in the Western world, uh, and already you see this clearly on social media, so many people commenting, people who know the situation are uh, really critical of this plan. And they're actually offended by it. It's, it's, they're calling it a apartheid plan a racist plan, etc. So uh, it's not a serious and it's not a serious initiative for Arab Israeli peacemaking. It's a serious uh, movement to cement the domestic political base of Netanyahu in Israel and Trump in the United States. And who was sitting in the very front row? Sheldon Adelson, this very wealthy uh, right wing Zionist American donor to Republican causes and some of the Christian Zionist extremists in the US who really form um, much of the base uh, of uh, of uh, Trump's uh, political support. Uh, so we should not see this as having anything to do with bringing about a peace settlement in the region. The, what's not clear is what will it bring about? It'll, it'll create greater tensions, greater anger, humiliation among Palestinians. It'll subjugate some Arab leaders and humiliate them into uh, not opposing it, but not supporting it. Uh, and it just really reaffirms the colonial reality that still dominates in, in Palestine, but not only in Palestine. Well, this is what's really that sentiment. Popular. Just briefly, if we can, on the wider scale, other countries, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Jordan, how are they going to see this grand plan of Donald Trump? They're going to be mostly critical, and some of them will be careful how they phrase their criticism. So the Saudis put out a statement uh, that I just read, and uh, the Emiratis and others are saying things like, we welcome this initiative as a first step towards peacemaking, but peacemaking must happen with the Palestinians and the Israelis negotiating directly. So they will essentially say that it's not accepted as a, a context for uh, resolving the conflict, but it is a first step because most of the Arab leaders depend heavily on the United States for security support, for economic support, and other things. And they're going to be very careful, people like the Saudis, the Emiratis, the Jordanians, the Egyptians, the Bahrainis, they're going to be very careful not to openly call this a racist apartheid plan, as most ordinary people would, because they really need the support of the U.S. And what it shows you is the terrible, terrible gulf between leaders and people in the Arab world, which is also seen in these extraordinary demonstrations all over the region, with millions of people on the street wanting to change their... Uh, rulers. Uh, so this and we'll is have really more analysis on this deal uh, over the day. But thank you very much, Rami Corey, speaking to us from Lebanon.